Watch out, Kyle Busch, a new challenger is approaching in the NASCAR truck series. How's it going everyone? My name is Eric and welcome to Out of the Groove. We have a fun episode planned today. I hinted earlier this week in my episode uh, Wednesday where I talked about how I think Brad Keselowski is the top candidate for the 48 car next year. I teased, if you will, that we would discuss Kevin Harvick's $50,000 bounty he's put on Kyle Busch. If any Cup Series driver could go down into a Truck Series race and beat Kyle Busch head to head, Kevin Harvick pledged to give him $50,000. Then Marcus Lemotis, who's the head of Camping World, Uganda Army, the people who sponsor the Truck Series, doubled up and he said he'd also uh, give $50,000 to the winner. So basically it was a 100,000 bounty pledged by Kevin Harvick and Mar Marcus Lemonis to any Cup Series driver who could beat Kyle Busch in a Truck Series race. Because Kyle Busch, if you guys won't recall, has won seven straight truck races. Going back to the end of 2018, then the five races he did last year, and then Las Vegas this past weekend, that's seven straight races that Kyle Busch has won in the truck series. And in a lot of those races, nobody's been even anywhere close to him. A lot of fans are getting kind of tired of it, so Harvick made this bounty, made this challenge public, and for the first few days, Nobody was taking him up on it. Nobody seemed to dare challenge Kyle Busch. Until now, yesterday, a very high profile driver decided to take up the challenge. Chase Elliott has decided to be the brave soul who is going to challenge Kyle Busch at Atlanta Motor Speedway here in just a few weeks. Here is the tweet he put out. Challenge accepted. I'll see you all in Atlanta. At Kyle Busch, at Kevin Harvick, at Marcos Lemonis. Thanks to GMS Racing and Hooters Racing. Game on. Hashtag game on. I'm new to Twitter, I guess. And so it sounds like Hooters is going to sponsor NASCAR's most popular driver as he dips down into the truck series at Atlanta, which is his home state, Georgia boy, to try and beat Kyle Busch. That's, that's something. Deals can come together very quickly in NASCAR, especially if your name is Chase Elliott. That's for sure. Now I had to go back and look at Chase Elliott's career stats because I couldn't remember him racing that many truck series races in his career and sure enough, he's only made 12 truck series starts in his young career. He never ran a full-time season in trucks. Now he does have two wins in those 12 races which is you know pretty solid, pretty, pretty decent ratio there. But it's going to be really interesting to see what Chase Elliott does in equipment that he's not super familiar with. He's got his work come out, cut out for him. Kyle Busch driving a KBM truck probably the best trucks in the field. Obviously, I love Chase Elliott. Kyle Busch is the best driver in the field. Chase is going to need to bring his best equipment, his best notes, his best everything if he's going to beat Kyle Busch at Atlanta. But this is going to be fun to watch. This is really interesting. I want to talk about what this means kind of in the bigger picture. A lot of people have had their opinions on not just Chase Elliott uh, kind of being the driver to take up the challenge, but also on Kevin Harvick even putting this challenge out there. A lot of people, some people I should say, have said, oh, what are you doing, Harvick? We want less cup guys in the truck series. Not more. Why would you... Why would you try to incentivize more cup guys going down and leeching in the lower series? That's been one criticism. I've, I've heard other people say like, oh, he, he's got it all backwards. He should be offering $50,000 to any truck series regular who can beat Kyle Busch. You know, one of these younger drivers or, you know, like Matt Crafton or Johnny Sauter. That's what he should be doing. He shouldn't be trying to fund, you know, a cup guy. He should be trying to offer a reward for younger guys, the truck series regulars that can beat Kyle Busch. Here's the problem with that mindset. None of these younger guys can beat Kyle Busch. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Uh, they've had plenty of opportunities. Kyle Busch has won seven straight races. Seven straight at many different types of racetracks. The young guys just can't beat Kyle Busch. And that goes to Johnny Sauter, Matt Crafton, the veterans, Grant Enfinger, the older drivers too. They can't beat Kyle Busch either. These truck series regulars aren't going to suddenly become better just because, you know, $50,000 is online or $100,000, whatever. It's not how this works. Believe me, if these truck series regulars could beat Kyle Busch, they would. They're trying to every single week. You think Sheldon Creed wasn't trying to beat Kyle Busch at Las Vegas last week? And he was giving it all he had and it still was not enough. So that's the problem, guys. These young drivers, and this is, Kyle Busch has been winning now for, this, since 2018 this streak goes back. That's multiple generations of drivers. These guys just can't beat Kyle Busch. And that goes for even guys in his own equipment. You know, last year, Todd Gillen, Harrison Burton, they couldn't beat Kyle Busch. They were nowhere close to him. This year, Raphael Lassard, Christian Eckes, I mean, look at Vegas. Lassard and Eckes made mistakes, wrecked. Kyle Busch was gone in a zip code of his own. And they're in the same equipment, theoretically. His new crew chiefs too, Danny Stockman. He's new this year to the 51 truck and Kyle Busch still winning with him. I mean, Kyle Busch is just really freaking good. These truck series regulars can't beat him. I mean, they just can't. Throwing an extra saying, hey, if you beat him $50,000 extra, that's not gonna make him better. That's not gonna help them beat him. <laughs> so I think it's great that Kevin Harvick offered up this challenge because I honestly think the only drivers that have a good chance of beating Kyle Busch in a truck series race are other cup series drivers. 
This is a one-time deal. This is great marketing too. I think this is gonna actually be really good for this truck series race. I think the ratings are gonna be up. I think it's gonna sell more tickets because they can market this as Kyle Busch, big, bad, mean Kyle Busch, who's been beaten up in the truck series for far too long versus new fan favorite Chase Elliott, son of Bill Elliott, hometown kid, because this is in Atlanta, this is in Georgia, near where he grew up. They can bill this as a true good versus evil, David versus Goliath, and there's an extra $100,000 on the line, which for a truck series race, and even for these cup series drivers that make a lot of money, $100,000 is significant. This is great. Atlanta Motor Speedway woke up this morning in the, with the biggest grin on their face they probably ever had because they can market the crap out of this truck series race. Ratings will be up. I mean, I know we don't really focus on truck series ratings uh, on this show. Really, anyone, nobody really talks about the truck series ratings because they're always less than cut by a significant margin. But if we can get those numbers, I guarantee you the truck series TV ratings will be up this year at Atlanta Motor Speedway because people are going to want to see Chase versus Kyle. I mean, those are arguably the two most popular drivers in the Cup Series outside of maybe Jimmy Johnson. And they're going down to the trucks here, 1v1 pretty much, because I think Chase, you know, I think he's at a slight disadvantage here. I don't think that GMS truck, whatever it is, is not going to be as good as Kyle Busch's truck. So he's at a slight disadvantage, but they're going to run one too. They're both going to run in the top five. They're going to run head to head at times. They're probably going to make contact at some point on the racetrack. And it's going to be fun to watch, or at least it's going to be very intriguing to watch because Atlanta, it's an intermediate, it's a mile and a half, but it is kind of a driver a driver's track. The, the car is really in, or the truck is really in the driver's hands there because the track surface is so worn out, it's so slippery compared to other mile and a halfs. So it's gonna really show which driver's having the best night, I think, Chase Elliott or Kyle Busch. So I'm extremely intrigued. I think there's probably a 70% chance Kyle Busch wins this race. There's probably a 25% chance Chase Elliott wins this race. And you know, I'll give the rest of the field, you know, a 5% chance. You know, they do outnumber the guys, you know, two versus 30. So I'll give the 30 a chance at winning this. I'll give them a 5% chance. You know, Thor Sport's good. You know, one of the other Nice trucks might do something. I don't know. Maybe one of the KBM guys does something. But I really think it's going to be Kyle Busch, versus, Kyle Busch versus Chase Elliott. And it's going to be a true, just like cinematic battle. Really, with a lot on the line. $100,000 is on the line. So this is really cool. I, I applaud Kevin Harvick for doing this. I applaud uh, Gander RV, you know, the sponsor of the Truck Series for doing this as well. Uh, this is great news. And I think it's cool that Hooters jumping in behind Chase Elliott to get him, get him in a truck. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what that paint scheme looks like. I haven't seen Hooters on a truck since... I don't know if we've ever seen Hooters on a truck now that I think about it. I don't know. Oh, shoot. I don't remember this. Is this a Hooters energy drink truck? Is this, Ky is this Brad Keselowski is what it says? I don't remember this one. 2007. All right, well, all right, Hooters has been on a truck. It's been a while, I guess. And wow, as I'm sitting here filming this, just saw a tweet from Kyle Larson, posted just three minutes ago. Uh, he's going to be in the truck, in a GMS racing truck, for Homestead, Miami. Uh, I guess that's the week after Atlanta. So if Chase Elliott doesn't get it done, Kyle Larson. Kevin Harvick. Ooh. He did say he would only give it, I believe, to the first person who, who, who wins against Kyle Busch. Let me... Double check on that. Hmm, not seeing that in any of Harvick's tweets, actually. So if, by some chance, Chase Elliott beats him at Atlanta and Larson beats him at Homestead, that's a lot of, that's a lot of money Kevin Harvick might have to shell out there. Well, this is great. They're stacking the deck against Harvick, against Marcus Lemonis. This is gonna be something else. Well, Kyle Larson at Homestead, I'd be a little scared of that. Shoot. <laughs> We've seen how good he can be there in a cup car. Oh, this is this is gonna be something. The plot is thickening. I'll be curious to see here. I'm uploading this here in the morning. I'm be curious to see if anybody else throws their hat into the ring. But we went from nobody all week to Chase and Larson. This is great. This is great promotion for the truck series, in my opinion. You guys are gonna be like, oh, we don't want more cup guys in the trucks. Well, these young guys in the truck series should beat some of these guys at some of these points. At some point, you know, there's only one way to match yourself up against the drivers you're eventually going to be racing against, and that is to actually race against them. If you can't beat Kyle Busch now, you're not even close to beating him now. What makes you think he's gonna, you're going to be able to beat him in the Cup Series? I mean, that's the problem we keep seeing with a lot of these young drivers. A lot of these young drivers come through trucks, come through Xfinity, and don't really beat Kyle Busch at all in those series, and then they get into the Cup Series, and we're like, hey, why are they running 15th every week? Mm -hmm. It's a perfect chance to compare yourself against the best. Now you're going to need to compare yourself not just against Kyle Busch, but also against Larson and Elliott. Now remember, Kyle Busch can only run five races a year, so this opportunity is limited. I do find this interesting because yesterday, before Chase Elliott revealed that he was going to take on this challenge and go after Kyle Busch at Atlanta, I heard uh, Kyle Busch and I think it was Clint Boyer, I think they were on the Barstool podcast. I saw it on Twitter 
whatever the Barstool Sports New Racing podcast is, the two of them were talking, and basically Clint Boyer was saying how he didn't think any driver was going to challenge Kyle Busch because of how expensive it is. Clint Boyer was saying, ah, if you do it, you got to rent one of Kyle Busch's trucks, and it's going to cost you 140 grand or whatever to do that. So even if you win the race and get the hundred thousand dollar bounty, you're still losing money because you had to spend 140 to rent the truck. Kyle Busch was kind of saying the same thing. He's like, yeah, I don't think anyone's going to do it because it's just not going to make sense financially, and I don't think anyone wants to challenge me and risk uh, risk losing. I think that was kind of the vibe I was getting from Clint Boyer and Kyle Busch. And of course, shortly after I saw that clip, of course, Chase Elliott, with backing from Hooters, who was, I guarantee was helping uh, spend some of that money. And if you have the chance for Chase Elliott with some funding to drive one of your trucks, I'd be all for it. So I thought it was really interesting to hear Clint Boyer and Kyle Busch kind of dismissing uh, Harvick's challenge as, you know, not realistic, not going to happen. And just a few short hours later, here we are. I'm really excited for it. Atlanta's a few weeks away still. Uh, Got to finish this West Coast swing up first. Uh, but then, trucks in Atlanta, Kyle Busch versus Chase Elliott with a lot of money on the line. Pretty cool. And I know Kevin Harvick has also said that if uh, Chase Elliott, I guess in this case, does you know, lose to Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch does win, I believe Harvick is still going to uh, donate that money to Kyle Busch, Kyle and Samantha Busch's foundation, or one of their charities, I believe, one of their organizations they're involved with. So either way, Kevin Harvick, this is for a good cause, I guess. Well, I guess not either way if Chase Elliott wins. I suppose Chase Elliott gets the money and not the charity. I don't really know how it works, actually. I should probably figure that out. Either way, I'm sure charities will be involved in some capacity. Actually, I checked again. The only way for Kyle Busch to win this challenge uh, is to survive all four of his next races without being beat by a cup race. I guess it's not just dependent on what Chase Elliott does. If Larson beats him or uh, one of the other races, I guess he could still lose his money. So Kyle Busch has to avoid being beaten four straight races. I bet he could do it. Also, I'm showing you this update right here. Uh, Chase Elliott is not just going to race at Atlanta. He is also going to race at Kansas. So you got three mile and a half upcoming that Kyle Busch will be participating in that uh, he will be contested with the $100,000 prize in effect. And as Bob Pockris confirms here, both drivers will be in the number 24 GMS truck. Remember, the truck series does not have limits on uh, lineups. So they currently have four full-time drivers for GMS. This will be a fifth truck, but unlike the Cup Series, you can do that in the trucks. Also, even more developments regarding this. Denny Hamlin apparently is very interested in participating in this whole challenge. Here he is responding to Kyle and Samantha Bush's charity saying, how about this? Get your founders to accept my sponsor at KBM. When I win, I will donate the 50,000 to your cause. So it sounds like Denny Hamlin wants in on this, at least wants to participate in the challenge, but he's apparently not able to get a deal with Kyle Busch to rent a KBM truck. So very interesting development. We'll see what happens with this. Uh, but who do you guys got? Do you think Chase Elliott has what it takes? Do you think Kyle Busch is too, too tough to beat in the truck series? Let me know. We got a couple weeks got it until, that, uh, until that's going to happen, but... Never too early to place your bets. Really exciting, really fun to see some rejuvenated energy around the truck series in recent uh, recent weeks, recent months. Uh, it really feels like the truck series is kind of being restored to some of its former glory. A lot of fun stories down the truck series, so uh, really exciting to see this kind of added to it. But thank you all for watching this video. That's all I've got. By the time you guys are watching this, I'm probably well on my way to Auto Club Speedway. I might already be there by the time you're finally watching this. Uh, so I'll be there this whole weekend for the uh, Xfinity and the Cup race. I'll be filming some stuff while I'm there. I'm also just going to be hanging out at the track. Uh, talking to drivers, also trying to hang out with some fans. So if you guys see me at the track, come say hi, of course. And yeah, it should be a really great time. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you are new. Uh, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, all that great stuff. Big thank you, of course, to my Patreon supporters. I could not do the show without the support I get from all of you on Patreon. So thank you all a whole lot for checking out that top link down below. Uh, it's really been awesome. We've added, added a few new names here in the last a few days, a few weeks. So that's really cool. I've been going to a lot more races lately, trying to cover things and give you guys a different perspective over there. And uh, Patreon really helps out a ton with some of the travel expenses. So thank you guys a ton for supporting me. Should have another Out of the Groove up Sunday night. It'll be my Auto Club race review. Should have that up the same day as the race. So that'll be exciting. Uh, but until then, hope you guys have a great weekend. See you at the racetrack. Have a lot of fun, guys. See you soon.